What's up, boxing fans? This is Ann here to really do another boxing analysis. This analysis is between Paul the Punisher Williams, who has looked really, really, really bad in his last three fights, but he's came back really, really hard. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm very impressed. Um, and Nusha Bahiro Ishida. Nubo Hero Ishida. I, th I think that's the proper way of saying it. If I'm butchering it, let me know. Um, but uh, this Japanese guy from Osaka, uh, Japan, he's very, very good. You know, had pretty good skills in the ring. They both pretty much the same height. Uh, of course, Paul Williams had longer uh, reach at like 78 or 80. No, no, no. He has an 82. No, no, no. It is 78. 78. And uh, Shida was at 72 inch reach. Uh, the reach really wasn't a factor that much. Um, Paul Williams did some great uh, work in the inside, of course. So that's where he likes to be at throughout the fight. Um, he landed some pretty good right hooks. Defense still needs a little bit, you know, well, a lot of bit, to be honest, uh, work. But overall, he threw a lot of punches. It was an exciting fight. It was not a boring fight. Threw, like, 943 punches. Of course, only landing, like, 20-something percent because he's not very accurate. Like, he doesn't try to pinpoint his punches in a certain area. But overall, he did a very good job. Landed about 230, 240 punches. Sheeta landed throughout the fight, I think, 160, 170. So you already know who won the fight, Paul the Punisher Williams. Um, Sheeta is not done, though. I really feel that um, at 36, he still has a lot to offer. He just didn't fight the right game plan, wasn't ready for that pressure that, you know, the Punisher puts on his opponents. You know, yeah, you can have all the sparring in the world, but until you get in, you know, the ring with that person, you won't really know what they can throw at you and what they can really do. Um, I really feel in this fight, though, that uh, you really have to give, you know, Paul Williams his credit because a lot of people doubt on him. He could have folded under the pressure, but he didn't. Um, he got rocked to me like two times in this fight, but it wasn't nothing too serious. Um, like I said, Ashida's power is good, but he doesn't really spring with his legs. So, you know, that's kind of making me think that Kirkland just had a very weak chin, and that's just my opinion. You know, you know, Ashida, if you look back on that fight in the first round, he landed bunches cleanly on the chin. Cleanly on the chin. But, um, like I said, you guys tell me what you think about tonight. Great night of boxing and showtime. Great night. I mean, let's go to the, um, uh, the Williams and Lopez fight. Oh, my goodness, man. The Williams was crying at the end, you know, and it was a six-round battle. I thought Williams, uh, you know, won the fight by a very small, small margin. By one point, even though he had a knockdown, you know, I mean, a very clean knockdown. He turned his shoulder over, threw that left hook, came over, bam, perfectly with the straight right. I mean, it was it was perfect. He, you know, kind of tucked his chin, came over, bam, straight right hand. It was beautiful. Um, Williams is pretty good, but he still needs to work on you know, finishing the last round, you know, hard because he could have lost that fight. You know, Lopez was really hungry at the end and throwing a lot of punches throughout uh, the fourth round through the sixth. He did a pretty good job, too, with his jab and just overall good boxing. Just, just good boxing tonight. But let's get to the biggest knockout to me. I mean, Chris Ariola. Man, God bless you. And, yes, Don King is a racist. I'm here to say he is a racist. Hurting country bumpkin motherfucker, okay? I do not like that fucker, okay? He very, very hates any Hispanic person. If you have any type of, you know, mixture of European blood or Spanish blood or whatever, he just does not like Hispanic people, period, okay? And he let that be known at the press conference. Even though he waves his little flags and shit, but whatever. I just appreciate Chris, you know, I'm just going to put that out there that you kept it real and, you, you know, you never bite your tongue, even though Jim Gray was trying to take the mic away from you. But uh, that was a very good fight, too. The the first round was amazing. I mean, I mean for these to be heavyweights, one at uh, 228 pounds, I believe his last name was, uh, I think it was Molina or something like that, versus Ariola. I mean, this guy, you know. He came in shape. He was really trying to fight. It was two Mexicans, you know, two Guerreros going head to head to each other. And, you know, Ariel is just too big, too too much for him at 245 pounds, you know. I feel Ariel's best weight to me is 235, 240, just like 240 is the limit, 235, 230-ish range. 
he gets to that. Oh man, he'll be so fast on his feet and so just, just. I mean, his power is amazing. You know, like when he hits you, you know, the the person like it like a deer in the headlights. It's amazing. You know, like I'm serious. Like he's very exciting fighter. If he would just improve on his double jab, like he should come in more. You know, block with his forearm, double jab, straight right hand. I'm telling, if he turned his shoulder all the way over every single time he punched, man, it'd be a knockout just like that, you know. But the clinch goes, you know, they they are just so skillful and so good at what they do. It'll just be very tough for Ariola again if he ever faced one of those. But any other person, he can hang with them and he can beat them. Uh, the knockout uh, came at like the very end of the round. It was like probably 40 seconds, minute left. And Ariella was, um, you know, had him on the ropes or whatever. He had landed a pretty good left hook. And then he had came over and he threw a perfect straight right hand. It was a time straight right hand. I think it was, you know, why he was in combination. That's what I remember. He was in combination. Hit him right here. Boom. You hit somebody right here the right way. And you turn your punch over. And you have heavy hands. Hey, the person's going down. Great night of boxing. But um, I am going to have to get on the bad points. Oh my goodness, this guy from Spain, you know, they, they call him, uh, they call him, uh, uh, Chico Guapo, okay, you know, meaning handsome, you know, gentleman, handsome boy, handsome man, however you want to put it, and, uh, Chico Guapo did, you know, he, he was, he was amazing, man, at first he got knocked down, it was an exciting fight with Tavares Cloud, Tavares Cloud looked like he was going to take him out in the first round, and, I mean, he got knocked down twice really, really bad. And then he got back up. And I don't know what, you know, his corner said throughout the second and third round. But, I mean, he picked it up. In the middle of the second round, he picked it up. Starting in the southpaw stands really long. Throwing a jab. You know, throwing left uppercuts. He had a really nice right uppercut like that. And it was just beautiful. And kept popping up, you know, Tavares Cloud's chain. He was throwing just straight lefts. I mean, he was throwing all different types of combinations. It was beautiful to see. You know, he remind me a lot of Joe Calzaki. His name is uh, uh, Capitillo. You know, Capitillo is, you know, hey, you, you can really box, man. Like, you know, like, it, it's been a long time since I've seen, you know, 175-pounders throw down like that. Tavares Cloud, much respect. But you need to quit talking shit, man. Like, like why talk shit? After your opponent showed that he had a chin, you told him he has no chin. You know, it's not like he said no mas and he just laid it on the ground. Like he got back up. You know, I just think that's fucking crazy. You know, that's you know, it's just it's just kind of a fucked up move. You know, Pendejo move of you to sit up there and talk about your opponent after he had your face looking like you know you've been getting hit with you know ice cubes all fucking day in your face. You know, look like you've been you know getting in a fight with a bat, you know, your eyes was, you know, puffy, and your lips was puffy, nose was puffy, you just looked at a mess, and he cut you up with not headbutts, cut you up the right way, it is with his hands, his hand speed, hand speed was amazing, Capitillo at 175 is dangerous for any boxer out there, and uh, as long as he keep getting trained by, you know, Sergio Flores as conditioning coach, and strength conditioning coach, and uh, Pablo Cerramento, he can only go up to the top. Not taking nothing away from the win, but I just really feel the judges should be suspended or either fired. You know, I just think it's ridiculous that these people they come over here. It's not. It's happened many times. Um, is the Cuban? You know, Arisani Lara and Paul Warren's fight. Come on, man! All them overhand lefts, consistent. You know, showing ring generalship, moving to the side. Come on now. He he did great in that fight. Um, I I can go through Lucas Matisse. Versus Devin Alexander in St. Louis. I mean, he clearly knocked him down. He clearly won that fight. I'm sorry. He won that fight. Um, you know, it's it so many I can go off of. Zab Judah Lucas Matisse. Uh, um, it's, just, just, it's just ridiculous. Like, like, why treat them like that? You know, if they box and they show that they can box and show range ownership, you know, you look for aggression and you look for combo and combinations and. You know, uh, just, you know, overall effective punches, meaning like power punches. And that's what Capitillo did throughout the whole fight. I mean, he threw so many just power punches. He outlanded them throughout each round. Now, towards Clyde has some good punches, you know, to the body and threw good left hooks. But you, you don't see somebody throwing four and five punches over and over at a time. He even threw an eight-punch combination at one time and landed five out of the eight. 
So you got to give Capitillo his credit, man. So he's got my vote. You know, he, he's got a new fan. I, I'm a fan of Capitillo, even though, you know, they gave him the lopsided, super lopsided, you know, robbery decision for uh, Tavares Cloud to win. But anyways, Tavares Cloud keeps his IBF title at 175 pounds, looking to face the Chad Dawsons and Bernard Hopkins and everything else of the world. But that was the best fight in 175, period. But uh, you guys tell me what you think in the comment section below. Showtime did a great job of putting these matches together. And, um, hey, it was it was a very, very, very good night of boxing. But anyways, I am out. I will have other videos coming up soon. I know I've been slacking. So uh, don't give me too much, you know. You know, don't boss my boss too much. But anyway, I will get back to you. This is Ant reporting.